Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, an architect at Lunalite. Today we're going to be looking at how to use Azure Blob Storage for logging with Syslog. Over the last several videos with Tech on Fire, we've looked at some of the use cases for Azure Blob Storage. And today we're going to look at yet another one. But to review, Azure Blob Storage, simply put, is just a way of storing data in the cloud. So it can store files, it can store the output of programs, it can be used for backups and all kinds of things. So with this in mind, we're going to look at how you can use Azure Blob Storage for logging. So before we go into this, I do want to look at some different kinds of blobs on Azure so that we get our heads around this. One of the uh, first kinds of blobs on Azure is a block blob. A block blob is a general purpose blob on Azure. And uh, this is the one that we've primarily been exposed to up to this point when we looked at how to do backups with AZ copy and how we use blob views behind the scenes uh, with our instance of Nextcloud that we installed on it. There's another kind of blob that's called an append blob and this is the one we're going to be looking at for logging on Azure and the purpose of an append blob is you simply just send up data and it gets added to the end of the blob while a block blob is one that you can do more random writes and reads to. And then lastly, there's another one called a page blob. Now, a page blob is used for VHDs that are hosted on Azure. And we did a video on how to bring your own operating system on uh, Tech on Fire that we use page blobs for. And what we did is we uploaded an entire VHD up to Azure and then used that VHD to create a virtual machine from. So these three kinds of blobs are the kind that are available. And the one that's specifically designed for logging is the append blob. So it's the one that we're going to look at today. Today for our demo, we're going to look at syslog servers on Linux. Now, a syslog server is a way of collating logs from multiple processes in the Linux context. So you basically have a lot of processes that are running on a given Linux box, and they need a way to write logs to a somewhere. And that could be just a log file for each given process, but this becomes hard to manage when you get a lot of processes that are all running all over the box. So you might have the, the system process processes simply to uh, run an SSH shell, you might have a web server, you might have an FTP server, you might have some kind of daemon that's running on that box, you might have some crons on that box, and if they all have their own individual log files, it can become unwieldy to manage all those logs. So the idea of a syslog was invented as a way to collate all those logs into a central location, and therefore most Linux boxes will have a syslog daemon running on that that box. Now, when you get to the server level, you might actually end up with hundreds of servers running in a given environment. So you might have 100 Linux virtual machines running on Azure, and you need a way to get the logs off of those hundreds of Linux servers onto a central repository. And that's where a syslog server comes in. So what a syslog daemon does is collects all the logs from the processes and then it will then forward those onto a syslog server and then it will capture all the logs from all the servers running in a given environment. And it will need a way to store those uh, different logs. And a simple solution would be to simply put those into Azure Blob Storage using append blobs. Now, for my demo today, I'm only going to use a single server rather than multiple servers, but it could, in theory, be scaled out to process multiple logs from multiple servers and then put all that into Azure Blob Storage by way of a simple syslog servers. Now, there are some commercial services that do something very similar to this, and indeed there is one from Azure with uh, log analytics on Azure where you can use log analytics on Azure to collate all the logs from all across your environment into a centralized location so you can analyze those logs and then alert on those logs. But if you don't want to do that and you want to roll your own, you could do something very similar to what we're going to do in this demo today. 
I'm here in the Azure portal and I have a resource group called Syslog Blob. Now with this resource group, I have some resources created in it. I have a storage account that is, um, you, that is where I'm going to be storing my logs. And then I have a virtual machine that has Ubuntu installed on it. Now let's drill down into this storage account. Now with Blob Storage, I have this container called Logs. And in this, I currently have a single blob called uh, 2019-7-2. I'm going to go ahead and delete this uh, so that I can recreate it. Um, and it's going to delete that blob, and now I have nothing in there. So when I start my daemon, it will actually create that blob again with the same name so that I can start logging to it. Now, my virtual machine is simply a Linux virtual machine that is configured with my custom log server on it. Um, so to show you what that looks like, I can show you the source code. If you're not a developer, that's okay. I don't think it's going to be uh, too hard to follow what I'm doing here. But even so, uh, this is just a simple Node.js application that's using a couple of packages available in Node.js. One is just a syslog daemon that is already built. So yeah, basically it's already written. All I need to do then is hook into that and then take the results of what it gets reported to the syslog daemon and then report it up to Azure Blob Storage. So here's where I'm defining my connection string and my connection string defines where my blob endpoint is as well as my secured access signature and then this is just simply defining my container that I'm going to be writing to and um, I've, what I've done here is basically just wired up all uh, the blob service to create the container if it doesn't exist and then wired up the the syslog daemon to receive input and then once it does it pushes it onto an in-memory queue and then it processes that queue uh, as it writes to it and then this function down here is the one that actually writes to the blob storage and what this does is it will um, come down here check to see if the blob exists and if it does uh, create a blob from some text that is from the event that happened and, and otherwise it uh, will just append to that blob. So it's using an append blob uh, from a um, from the text that is, it is derived from the events that are coming into my syslog server. So it's a very simple syslog server here that is just writing the results back to a blob, a pen blob on Azure Blob Storage. So let's go down here to Putty where I have these running and this is my folder here that I have my application installed in now uh, what I did is I configured the, the syslog daemon on this particular Ubuntu server to use the uh, local host for its syslog server so the syslog daemon is reporting back to this little syslog server that I have running here so if I go node index.js it's going to start my syslog server. Now I'm going to co come over here to another tab or another window. And this one, I'm going to type in a command called logger. Now what logger will simply do is just write something to the syslog. This is my event. And what this will do is, is then write an event back to my syslog daemon, which then propagates to my uh, syslog server. And there's some other stuff going on in the background too. It looks like I'm getting some hits against my SSH box uh, instance here with uh, someone trying to log in as root. And so there's some background noise, people just scanning the internet for uh, people that have SSH and then trying to uh, log in to uh, SSH with uh, root to get access to this box. So you can see that I'm getting more than just what I actually sent over. But if you look here um, uh, where I have my event that I published, there it is right there. So this is logging these events back to the console, but I really want to see if these are getting logged back to Azure Blob Storage. So let's go back down to my Blob Storage account and take a look in this Azure Blob Storage account to see if those things actually got written. So back over here in my uh, blobs, and here's my logs. And there is my new uh, log file that I deleted a minute ago. So just re recreated at 2019.7-2 for today's logs. Uh, I can't edit a, a pen blob in uh, Azure Blob Storage. It won't let me. Um, so I have to download it. So I'm going to go ahead and download this blob here and open it and uh, see if it'll let me open this up with Notepad++. And we can, should be able to see all of those event, events being logged back to this as just as simply as a CSV file. So with this demo, you can see here that I've just created a simple log server. 
configured Ubuntu to write to that log server, and then that log server is just essentially just writing the logs back to uh, Azure Blob Storage using a, an append blob. So we can use Azure Blob Storage for a lot more than simply as a backend for uh, Linux or as a way of doing backups as well. So it's got a lot of uses, and this is just a very straightforward way of doing it. You can you can build your applications of any kind really to log to Azure if you want to using a pen blobs as well. This wraps up today's edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'll be posting the source code for this demo on GitHub and then I'll link it in the description below as well as some of the other samples that we have done related to blob storage and how you can use it in Azure including how to bring your own operating system, how to use it for backups and how you can use it uh, uh, with blob used to mount it into Linux and how I installed Nextcloud on that as well. So thanks for watching Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content please consider visiting us online at at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.